J-S-I Family of Joy and Hope Good morning brothers and sisters Every fourth Sunday of Easter the church celebrates the Good Shepherd and it's popularly called the Good Shepherd Sunday and another name for today is Vocations Sunday what is the meaning of vocation it's gotten from the Latin vocare to call and there is another word to hear a cool in Greek. Vocation in our ecclesiastical context is to be called into a particular field of life. Like I used to say, we come or we came into this world with closed fists. Whatever you are going to be, whatever you are going to do, is right in your hand. What God has destined you to be in life can only be destroyed by one person, and that is you. We have three main vocations in the Catholic Church. We have vocation to the priesthood. We have vocation to religious life. And we have vocation to the lay apostolate. I know many of you have this book. The Joy of Service, Dialogue of Action by Father Cornelius at Febo Monokwa. If you want to understand the vocation to the priestly life, read chapter 4 of this book. And you will see the functions of the bishop, the priests, and how they are called to shepherd God's own people. So what you have there is witness to the ministerial priesthood. And the chapter 5 of that book talks about women religious and collaborative ministry. And of course, chapter 6, the laity in the world. And in that section, you will see that the lay faithful is called to build a happy home, the function and duties of the Christian child, the professional fulfillment, the teacher as a role model, then your religious duties. A shepherd is one called to take care of the sheep. And in the gospel today, John tells us that my sheep hear my voice. My sheep does what? Yeah. Hear my voice. Why is it that in human anatomy, God gave one mouth and two ears to human beings? Do you know? Why now? If you know, you can tell me. Why did God give us only one mouth? and two ears beautiful so that we can talk less and listen more a leader talk less and listen more and what does it take to be a leader in the very first chapter of the book i just showed you said who is a servant a leader is a servant 
And what is the motto of Pope John Paul II, Saint John Paul II, the servant of the servant of God? And a servant is one who is ready and willing to die for the sheep. We have examples of shepherds in the Old Testament. Abraham was a shepherd. And he had a brother. What was his brother's name? Hmm? Lot. Lot too was what? A shepherd. They had a conflict. The servant of Abraham and the servant of Lot had a conflict over land property. Abraham called his brother and said, it is not wise for two of us to quarrel. You see the land before you? Choose. If you choose a right, I will go left. If you choose left, I will go right. And Lord, look at the very fertile side of the whole land. I decided to choose the side that goes towards Sodom and Gomorrah. And that was how the case was settled. But Abraham did not stop at that. He still cared for his brother. Even though he has made the choice, taken the choices part of the land. An angel of God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Where Lot was their father. He welcomed and entertained the angels and started prizing. And at the end of the day, God said, if I can see only one good person there, if you were in Abraham's shoes, your brother, you are contesting for one political position and he has taken it from you. Will you wish your brother good? Like in Nigeria, will you wish your Nigeria and your brother good? Another example of a shepherd was David. When David was going to be anointed, he was not the best among the father's children, he was not the eldest, but God chose him all the same. David showed what it takes to be a leader. He forgave Saul, who was after his life. He had an opportunity to kill him. And he said, you shall not touch the lost anointed. But the modern office holders we have today, they are so Machiavellian that whatever is going to be an obstacle to their rulership, they remove from the way. What does the shepherd do? Jesus says, I give them eternal life. And they shall never perish. So as priests, religious and laity, we are called to tenderly care for the people under us. You know you can eat your sheep, but not to consume the sheep, not to pray on the sheep, but to pray for the sheep. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. The first really talks about the leadership of Paul and Barnabas. How they suffer for the world. And at the end of the day, how they turned against them. But they were happy to suffer for the cause of the gospel. And of course, the second reading of today is a witness of John. And that, this has to do with life, death, and what will happen there. And that is why, too, I want to introduce to you the second edition of this book, Human Life Here and Hereafter. It talks about eschatology and anthropology. Eschatology is what is going to happen to us on the last day. Death, heaven, hell, you know, it talks about purgatory and other things. Then anthropology, life. How do you want it tend to manage your life on earth? 
I'm introducing this to you because the Reverend Father on the Sunday has only few minutes to talk to you. In the seminary, they taught us how to be an auto formator. That is to form yourself so that you can go home and read. And when other people, Pentecostals, Protestants, Muslims, Hindu, Buddhists ask you, why are you a Catholic? Then you can adequately respond. So John said, I, John, looked and behold a great multitude which no man could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and tongues. Yesterday, I was interviewed by CTV. You know the reunion, it used to be regional, but now the reunion, that is Rekowa, Episcopal Conference of West Africa. They just, they have having their closing mass today at 10 o'clock. And the theme of their conference was, is what? Fratelli Tutti. That is fraternal love. That is to love one another, friendship. And the dialogue of friendship was introduced by Pope Francis when he visited Turkey in his dialogue with Erdogan. And he asked me about why is it Nigeria we can't not be friends? And I re-echo like as I've always done. We can be friends in this country. We have always been friends. We attend school together. When I was in my class, we were only in my own arm. I was the only person from my village in that class, in Fatima College, Aouchi. At National Youth Service Course, why is it that you are not posted to your state so that you can have the grabs of the nation? So we are called to a life of friendship, and this can only be possible if we have good leadership. Where the leader does not use religion and ethnicity to prey on the citizens. I am so happy. I've just discovered something. Can you ask for that, Cornelius? What did you discover? Nigeria is very, very rich. Now I know that our political leaders, our shepherds, and even the governor of Central Bank can easily bring out 100 million in order to rule, is it to rule over us or to lead us? To rule over us. So now this is my discovery. If every political leader and central back governor in this country can donate 100 million, will Nigeria need to borrow money again from any other country? So tell me now. So if we have this money, so much money, that 100 million, come on. If you have 100 million, will you not enjoy your retirement? You know what you can do? Give my village 100 million. The school that is dilapidated in Irekma. Now we are crying for help. Our school is dilapidated, no roof, no nothing. I wish there is one Irekma politician who can just give us 100 million we transform that primary school to university. I don't know if our people are thinking at all. Does it make any sense to you? But right, right now, close to 20 poor people have brought out 100 million. Eh? You say it's more than that? 25 now. 25 times 100 million. 2.5. Oh, chineke me. It's not an easy road, though. So, with this, can we say that we have leaders or office holders? Eh? I just remember Shakespeare. He said, this whole problem is not in our stars, but in our character that we are orderly behind their huge legs we walk under. 
we don't always have the best we are not saying we should have the best but at least we should have people who have the common good of the citizens please if you know somebody father you know that you need money now well well see this is our project now see all these people that bring this hundred million they know they will not win you tell them may they give you you go shine prayer for them a leader does not celebrate self-aggrandizement a leader thinks of the other before the self i've said this before in this church so i want to round up now with this you know we have three categories of leaders you have the idiot what's the next one you have the tribe and the other one the citizen the idiot is always a fear me 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 myself and i the tribe is me myself and i are the next person who is related to me and and of course the citizen is one who thinks of the common good so this money have been hiding in this country and we don't know so in nigeria for example which one has a higher percentage tribe citizen or idiot no me i not believe all of you here no 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 is it my it's small the idiots are less do you know why you think the idiot are more? Yes. This one finger, if he carry oil, what happened? It sells the rest. It's just that we have been so domiciled and we have given power to a few idiots to rule us. I like this analogy of Bishop Matthew Hassan Kuka. <laughs> he said, when we finish school, the college dropout, those who have ordinary pass, they are the one on top. Then the one who have credits, they are the one used. And the one who have distinction will go and kneel down and beg the one who have passed. Where have the credit one? They become pastors to be praying for the ones that are that do, no the pastors they are the ones praying for the for the past who are leaders because the past those who pass who are leaders i don't know i want to beg myself to stop you have a solution to this problem do you know you have a solution Choose your leaders wisely. Have, do you have your PVC? Me, I get. So, now, of all these hundred millionaires, I don't know. Well, first of all, they have put a tag on our neck. Because the poor man who has a gift of leadership, who has a gift of administration, where you go see hundred million? So in other words, they have technically knocked out the good people. So what do we do? Okay, what do we do? <laughs> eh? <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> but walk and pray. We, we just look for God and let manners fall. Is that what we do? What do we do practically? Eh? <laughs> so we protest. If you ask me, if you ask me, now I go. <laughs> if you ask me, this is what I think we should do. We should vote wisely and 
the Fed our votes. You have always voted wisely. But have you been able to defend your vote? Okay. Okay, don't do. So, we who are on the side of this altar, I want to call on us priests and religious to keep praying for this nation. Lay people do what you know how to do best. Go to your troubles. I'm not saying go and fight too. Don't fight anybody. But make sure that nobody match on your will. Your will is yours. So it is my prayer today that Christ, the good shepherd, will give us good leaders through Christ our Lord. Amen.